Do you ever get people saying that they're solutions industry agnostic so they can just reach out to everyone? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love when yeah. I'm like, hey, tell me about your ideal customer profile. And they're like, any company with five or more <laughs> employees. And I'm like, so you're ideal. You're ideal. You're like my dream customer. If I could sit them down and this would be my perfect customer, it's somebody with six people, like based in Singapore yeah. in in an industrial company yeah. or like what? It's really anybody. And they're like, oh no, like it would be this. I'm like, okay, so you got to think about the ideal part of ideal customer profile. First of all, we're not talking total addressable market mm -hmm. here, but yeah, all the time. People are like, yeah, any anybody, anybody who signs a check, that's my ideal customer. So where do you, where would you typically start working with? And let's let's pretend it's a company they they have product market fit, like they've got that part kind of figured out. What are some of the things that you see them messing up on when it comes to how they think about or and approach uh, the targeting and the who part from a strategy standpoint? Yeah, I think I mean mentioning product market fit like that's really important because it's going to be a whole different conversation if you're, for instance, if you've never sold through outbound or you're even pre revenue on a product like you're going to have a whole lot less insight into this. But if yeah, you've got product market fit, so you're retaining your customers at a really high rate. They're referring their friends. They're pumped about you. Like all these things that are showing you you've really nailed it. Um, you need to be looking for patterns in those customers, like. Why did those customers come to you? Who is the person at that company who's making the decision? What are the pain points that they came to you with? Why you as opposed to a, um, a competitor or as opposed to do nothing? And you need to look for those patterns. And that's kind of how you analyze based on your existing customers who might be your ideal customer because you're looking for the people who are going to get the greatest impact from you, who are likely to pay the most, who are going to stick around the longest. And then you can say, okay, if we model um, an ideal customer off of all of those examples, that's one way to do it. But the other part of it that I think a lot of um, companies miss is that you need to pair that with what you can profitably, what you can spend to profitably acquire a customer. So if you have product market fit in a tiny industry. You've got a really finite amount of accounts that you can work for and your deal size is not that big, but you've already got five reps on the team and you want them to start prospecting. You got to, you've got to go back on that and have a look and say, okay, what I can spend to profitably acquire a customer is a function of the average deal size. Like what, what revenue is actually going to be brought in by these customers. And then what I'm going to spend to go out and get these these customers. We know outbound is more expensive now than ever. The tools are expensive. People are expensive. They're, they can command higher salaries. Um, and it takes more time to book each meeting, which means it's more expensive to get each meeting. If you've got to go personalized, if you've got to sort of go slow and steady, it's, it's costing more money. So if you then have a tiny average deal size and a tiny market, no way it's going to be profitable. So you need to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, can we move up market? Because maybe that Maybe we thought that was our ideal customer profile, but it's not our ideal outbound customer profile, given all the spend that's going to have to happen to acquire that customer. So you're you're sort of having to combine a few things to understand what the right sales development approach is, um, considering who can we target, who cares about us enough that they're actually even going to respond via outbound, then what revenue can we get from them? And then how can we make sure that we acquire that revenue profitably? It's sort of a, a marriage of those two ideas that I think is the biggest mess that most companies have. 